Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Welcome. Access to Democracy returns. Uh, we have a first-time guest. I'm going to pronounce his name once and then prefer, refer to him as Maoli uh, by Diane Nathan, and uh, originally from India. And before we start the interview, I, I just want to mention again, as we did earlier in an interview today, that we're dedicating today's programming to the memory of Dwayne Bruce Haver. Dwayne, who was with us and an integral part of this operation for a decade, was our mentor, our friend, uh, our humorist. He was involved in so many activities, not just access to democracy, but was a marcher in the Holodazzle Parade from its beginning, a master gardener, active in local theater, uh, just so many activities. And he passed suddenly last Sunday. Uh, to say that we will miss him is an understatement to say that we all really are better people because of associating with him is the truth. And in loving memory true, he will be sorely missed. Rest in peace, Dwayne. Now, they say the show must go on, and we do. Mowley, uh, yes. you are a unique individual who's on the cutting edge of energy and power for the future. And you came about it in an interesting way. You have more degrees, uh, certainly, than a thermometer, I think. Thank uh, you. The last one being a PhD from uh, Wisconsin. You're involved in energy. You're involved in engineering. You're involved in, in so many things. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, I did my undergraduate uh, in uh, engineering from uh, a very prestigious uh, college in India called College of Engineering, Gindi. Uh, and uh, after uh, my undergraduate uh, uh, degree, I uh, was given a research uh, assistantship at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, I uh, took that on and I moved from uh, uh, Chennai, India to, uh, to Wisconsin. And I graduated uh, with a PhD uh, in, uh, in January of 1994 uh, under uh, the tutelage of uh, Dr. Carl Loper. Uh, Carl Loper, uh, who was my uh, professor at the University of Wisconsin, uh, was uh, one of the most uh, well-known professors in metal casting. And, uh, An award-winning professor that's in correct. metallurgy, right? That's correct. He, he had written many books, and uh, and uh, so I was very thrilled to be uh, his student. And uh, after uh, I worked for him, uh, I uh, was involved in a small uh, startup to, uh, along with the professor as well, uh, who was also a partner in that. Someplace along the line, you also became a certified energy manager, a CEM. That's correct. That, right. that I got recently, uh, the last uh, four years ago. Okay. And uh, then, I, yeah. am I correct that you went to uh, Texas Instruments? That's correct. I, in, I, in an executive capacity? Uh, I started off as an engineer first, and then uh, they moved me up uh, 
into into uh, yield engineering management. Uh, so I I worked at Texas Instruments for almost uh, eleven years, uh, not quite, but almost eleven years, and I moved up uh, the rank and we developed uh, very interesting products uh, during that time, and I surely helped uh, bring the cell phone to mass production uh, during my tenure at, at uh, Texas Instruments. And of course, Mooley Engineering, which is your own company here, is a solar, generally a solar energy company, uh, where you have innovated and uh, patented some very interesting things. But let's talk about how you got uh, to doing that, because you were induced to leave Texas Instruments uh, by a company in Bloomington, uh, will remain nameless for the moment, and they brought you up here and offered you a job with all sorts of promises, and they offered you a job that didn't exist yet. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, yeah. then, in the downsizing of our economy in 2007, 8, 9, uh, they let you go from this job that didn't exist. Correct. In seven months, uh, about seven and a half months, uh, they hired me and let me go, uh, moved me from Texas. So uh, here you are, 47 years of age, with all these degrees. You moved your wife and two children here. Uh, you're in Egan, Minnesota. And wow, where do you go from here? Yeah, it was uh, very uh, distressful. Uh, it was a very tormented uh, to me and my family, um, but uh, I felt uh, uh, I had to move on and uh, it was very difficult uh, at that time, uh, it's still very difficult to fathom a big corporation lying to me, uh, but uh, I had to move on and uh, uh, find ways to make myself uh, useful. So you did two things. One, you got an attorney who realized that Minnesota, being a cutting-edge state, has a law that says you can't induce somebody to come here for a job that doesn't exist. And that attorney brought a lawsuit, uh, I believe in federal court, and you had a jury trial, which resulted in your favor in a verdict of $1.9 million. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, that eased the pain a little bit. But in the meantime, you had already started Mooley Engineering. Uh, just to make a correction, it did not ease my pain. Uh, the, the, the lawsuit is not over. Uh, so it's still on appeal? Uh, it is on appeal. And uh, it, I mean, though I won the case uh, hands down, uh, the first time they took uh, uh, to appeals court, the appeals court uh, uh, with a two to one uh, uh, ruling uh, asked for a second trial and uh, the second trial came out with a hung jury uh, about six months ago. Oh. And so uh, you're going to have to go through it again? Um, uh, the legal system is a quagmire right now, uh, at least in my, in my situation and uh, uh, I mean I, I wasn't aware we are going to be talking about uh, the case. I was, I was more prepared to talk about uh, my business, so well, that's why <laughs> we want to keep you on your toes. <laughs> and uh, so you, you actually, uh, according to an article in the Star Tribune, uh, are the innovator of solar power for do-it-yourselfers, and you have invented something, which allegedly, uh, and I say allegedly because anybody can do. But I, I guarantee you, in my in my hands. I would never be able to put together, simpler than IKEA, uh, a solar pad. But tell us about solar pad, solar power, and what you did. Uh, what happened um, when, when I lost my job, uh, I uh, felt uh, uh, at my age it will be difficult for me to, uh, to find a job. Uh, and the downturn uh, uh, was pretty severe as well and everybody there were more people let go than there were people being hired so I had to uh, reinvent uh, myself so that's when uh, you asked me a question about uh, the certified energy manager that's when I went and uh, learned my uh, and learned about uh, 
uh, energy and uh, I always had a passion for energy too. Uh, so this was uh, something that I could uh, go and, and learn more about. Uh, to answer your question about the solar energy, I started off uh, in 2009. Uh, my company started in January 2009, so we'll be celebrating five years uh, this coming January. Uh, we started off uh, installing solar systems like anybody, uh, any contractor uh, would do. And uh, the brainchild of my present solar pod product was because I felt the way we were doing the legacy uh, solar system installations, they were very, uh, very uh, cumbersome, uh, expensive, uh, custom, and would not make solar energy uh, ubiquitous. It will not be very uh, easily scalable. So uh, I came up with a modular plug and play uh, system that uh, similar to a brick. If you uh, buy a brick, the brick can build a small wall as well as a great wall of China. And that's the concept that we, we developed uh, in my company, uh, the solar pod, is we give you one small unit and then you can grow it to be a megawatt size or you want it to be a 10 kilowatt size. So let's uh, see some of the pictures of some of the operations that you have been involved in and we'll bring them up on screen and then you can tell us what each one represents. This is Austin, Texas. Yeah, this is uh, a customer uh, who ordered uh, solar pod through our website and uh, heard about us through our website and uh, he ordered it and we delivered it to him and he and his wife uh, actually put it together. Uh, this whole uh, eight uh, solar pod system. Uh, in fact, uh, he told me about a couple weeks ago uh, that he was, before he bought it, he thought eight solar pods would, would run his entire home. Now he feels that he bought more than he, uh, he should have. Uh, is it fair to say that one solar pod can uh, really power, uh, say, everything in your kitchen? Uh, yes and no. Solar power is very different uh, because of geolocation. Uh, solar energy falling in Arizona is different than in Alaska. So uh, if it's going to power, it surely could power the kitchen in Arizona. However, in Alaska, you may need two solar pods because of the sun energy differences between the two uh, locations. So you deliver the pods and you deliver the mechanism to set it up. And as a matter of fact, you work with uh, quite a few industry leaders in this regard. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, we work with uh, companies in California. Uh, Enphase Energy is, is one of them. Uh, we work very closely with them. Uh, we work with, uh, with many companies uh, in China uh, in, the, in the solar panel uh, manufacturing as well. Solar energy, wind energy is really the energy of the future. We're going to, not only uh, because of non-pollution, but we're going to run out of uh, petroleum at some point. But as long as the earth exists, we're not going to run out of wind. We're not going to run out of the sun. Uh, and of course, if wind gets really, really down, all we have to do is turn our politicians loose and uh, that'll provide enough wind for uh, sure. much power. Sure. But uh, let's bring up another photo and have you tell us what that is. Uh, this is a home which was done uh, a solar uh, on a legacy system. This is what I call a legacy system. This is how solar is uh, typically mounted onto a roof and uh, the, the connections are made right into your electrical panel. And uh, this is a, a, a true legacy uh, system. Uh, we have actually uh, a new innovative uh, product uh, called uh, Solar Pod Crown, uh, which would be going onto roofs uh, similar to this uh, except the major difference is that in this kind of a roof, uh, there are several penetrations. Uh, just to give you, this roof has about 60 penetrations to put a 5 kilowatt uh, solar system. Uh, it, 
it's a slightly more. Am I correct that this house is in Egan? That's correct. Okay, and we should mention that your business is also here in Egan. That's correct. You can look it up, Mowley Engineering, M-O-U-L-I. That's correct. Uh, so and is this enough to power this home? Correct. This home has, uh, has got 100% uh, solar uh, and, and all of the energy from the solar, uh, I mean, goes into the house. Now right. how much money would it cost to, uh, at today's prices to build that system? You are looking at, uh, depending on how uh, complex the roof is, it can be anywhere from $18,000 to about $25,000. Okay, that's one side. The other side is that the government is giving, uh, really, emoluments, is giving uh, breaks in terms of taxation for people who go to solar energy. Isn't that true? That's true. Uh, the federal government gives a, a, a across the board 30 percent uh, tax credit. Uh, so that's a, that's, I mean, they don't uh, have any, any selective uh, uh, picking of any, any one particular product or company. If you have an, uh, a, a good uh, solar, solar uh, system, they'll give you 30 percent of the installed cost as a tax credit. And you don't pay any more? energy bills. Correct. So it may be uh, out of pocket expensive up front, but in the long run it becomes really, really inexpensive and self-perpetuating. Sure. Uh, that's why, I mean, you had said uh, earlier that uh, solar energy is of the future. Um, I wish to make a small correction that I think solar energy is now. Uh, we believe uh, we have brought the price uh, so affordable through our solar pod uh, and uh, through our uh, integrated products. Uh, we believe that if you give the power to the consumer, they will be able to purchase this uh, and feel good about, about it. Uh, we presently sell our products through Menards and Northern Tool. You know, they have been a, a very strong partner uh, in, our, in our growth, and we believe that uh, has propelled us uh, to a very new uh, era where it's become a, a consumer-driven uh, retail uh, kind of a product. And this system stores energy so that on days when it's cloudy and things like that, the stored energy is what propels it, is that right? Uh, we have actually two products. Uh, one product is a stored energy, it's called solar pod standalone. Uh, you're right, that, stores, that product uh, stores the energy and you can use it uh, s 7 by 24. There is another product called solar pod grid tied, which uh, works interactively uh, with, the, with the grid. So, and that is uh, essentially a completely green uh, product it, uh, it uh, offsets all of your uh, coal or fossil fuel uh, energy that you may get from the grid. And in doing research, uh, I understood that there are some people who have solar energy where they actually sell it back to the power companies uh, who are strapped for energy. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes, there is something called a net metering law, which is present in all 50 states in the U.S. Uh, the, uh, the net metering is essentially uh, a law where uh, when you produce excess energy in your facility, you can sell it back uh, to the grid at retail price and buy it back uh, in the night time when you don't have uh, solar energy. So every night uh, you do have uh, one, one time when you will not see the sun, hence you will have to buy that back. You're right. Let's bring up another photo <coughs> of an installation. This one's in Eden Prairie. <coughs> Excuse me. It seems it's a very large house, and there are quite a few solar pods up there. Yes, this is a, a five and a half kilowatt uh, 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 home in, in Eden Prairie. This is uh, actually right along the river as well, and uh, has a very beautiful uh, south-facing uh, back uh, uh, gable. And uh, this was installed uh, about uh, three, three and a half years ago and uh, has been working uh, flawlessly uh, and we don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, it has 25-year uh, uh, warranties on, on the solar panels. Okay, let's go to another photo if we can. 
Yeah, this is a photo of, of the solar pod in Pennsylvania. Uh, this was installed uh, in, in a city called Warminster, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, this is a very interesting uh, installation because this was installed about uh, uh, three or four months before Hurricane Sandy uh, uh, hit uh, the location. And uh, uh, the Hurricane Sandy uprooted several uh, uh, trees in this uh, customer's home, but the solar pod uh, was still standing and w it, it, it was still working uh, uh, all the time. And the so fact of the matter is, in this area, energy went down. The energy companies went down. They weren't able to power anything, but uh, that home in Pennsylvania continued to have power. Uh, well, this is a grid tied. That was a grid tied system, so so it did uh, get power when the when the power came back out. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. Next, what do we have? Yeah, this is an Las interesting. Las Vegas. Yeah, I, I wanted to show this uh, because uh, even in in you know if you have a, uh, a it's it's become the solar part is more like a a, commo a commodity, more like a. Uh, appliance today, so it was uh, installed right next to a swimming pool uh, to power uh, some of the swimming pool in the winter time. Uh, the heat uh, of the water, so it was uh, interesting that uh, you know they used it uh, to to power uh, the the some of their appliances uh, through this, and the installation was very interesting to us. That's why. Well, it, if there's it, one thing that they have in Las Vegas, it's a lot of heat and a lot of sun. That's correct. <laughs> okay. Next, what do we have? Yeah, Massachusetts. This, uh, this is a. Uh, this is also. Uh, we have a very uh, 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 interesting installation in 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 Massachusetts. Uh, they wanted to install this uh, on on top of a uh, wood. Uh, you know, the, the, if you look at the at the bottom, they the, they stored a lot of wood uh, in, the, in there, and they they burned wood in that facility to make uh, all of the green power. And uh, they they had uh, some electrical use, and uh, they wanted to see how uh, the solar pod would work uh, in their in their home. And they installed it right on the roof, just like any any uh, any anybody else. And it was uh, and and the owner is uh, is ecstatic that uh, it it it, f it went up uh, so quickly. And he was able to install this in less than six hours, even though it was a 10-12 pitch, which is a very steep roof. And again, it's a self-installed. Correct. It's a self-installed. Yeah. Each one of these uh, solar pods weighs about how much? Uh, each solar pod is about 420 pounds uh, in weight. It's not very heavy. Uh, each section comes in about 50 to 60 pounds uh, weight. It's not uh, too heavy, correct? So okay. anybody, any strong uh, human being can can lift it up and move it around. Yes. Well, you can leave me off that list, but uh, <laughs> uh, can we? Do we have another photo up there? Okay. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I mean, this is a photo of the parts of the solar pod. Uh, you see the d d small circles. Um, the left top is the inverter. It's a it's a micro inverter. Uh, the 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 top uh, right is the telescopic uh, leg that helps to adjust the the angle of the sun. Uh, the advantage of the solar pod is you can. Uh, place it uh, anywhere in the world, and it will. Or you can easily adjust it from zero degrees uh, uh, tilt to 45 degrees tilt. So that's the another uh, innovation in the solar pod. And then through simple plug and plugs like the yellow uh, plug that you see over there, that plug is uh, is is a simple plug like you would get in a 240 volt uh, 20 amp uh, plug that would go into a washer dryer. And that's what that plug is 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 uh, showing, and uh, it shows that we have made it uh, uh, pretty much a commodity uh, and, a, and a pretty much a retail kind of a, a system. I read an article recently that said that uh, in in uh, some installations, people are using robots, and the use of robots in creating the installation will ultimately make it even cheaper. Is that so? Uh, yeah, but uh, in in this particular case, uh, I mean, if you use if you're going to do a, a one megawatt uh, kind of a, a, 
large uh, where you buy 1,000 solar pods and install 1,000 of them, then the robot would become uh, significantly cheaper to do it. And that's a good, I mean, solar pod can easily be used for that kind of uh, installation. N no other system uh, in the world can install that easily. And solar pod is you. I mean, this is your invention. It's trademarked. Thank you. And it's patented. Yes. Yes, so that uh, really we should mention, of course, that Mali Engineering is right here in Egan, and you are a neighbor. That's right. I'm very close. I'm, I'm very close to Thomson Reuters, too, so okay. not too far from, from Thomson Reuters. And I take it this is a promo, the sun? Correct. Within uh, your reach, just plug in the sun. That's right. You know, this is, that's what we, we want to show that uh, you can just plug in the sun uh, using our, our product, uh, solar pod, and that's what we are here to promote. And as I said, we believe in uh, the customer getting all of the uh, confidence and control of their purchases. Uh, we sell a very high quality, high efficiency, simple and affordable product. And we don't get into uh, the politics uh, of any, any of those things. We just sell a very good product. And we are very, very happy to see uh, customers from Massachusetts to, to California. And you've actually sold to California, to Massachusetts, yes. uh, to Pennsylvania, to Minnesota, et cetera. Texas, yes, Texas. Las Nebraska. Vegas, Nevada, obviously. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's a business that's just starting to grow. And as people become more aware of it, and as people become more aware of the money they can save in the long run, there's no question that solar energy uh, is a very attractive use. And to me, it's more attractive than the windmills that you see if you go down to Iowa or something like that, where they are offshore, offshore in Massachusetts. Uh, this is some, something that's functional and certainly much more attractive. Sure. <coughs> uh, every product has its uh, advantages. I mean, I, I wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, I think s solar gives a very good, uh, gives the, gives another option to the, to the consumer uh, to become green. You know, we are all looking for ways to help our planet uh, and become more green. And if you own an electric uh, vehicle, uh, you, the easiest way uh, to become uh, green is to use a solar system. So We've been talking with Muli of Muli Engineering here in Egan, or Mauli. He pronounces it Mauli, I pronounce it Muli, so that's the correct way to pronounce it, no matter what he says. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you for coming in and explaining this to us. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who benefited by it. And I want to mention also that we are dedicating this in the memory of Dwayne Bruce Haber, and whose picture inadvertently popped up a few seconds ago. Uh, we thank you for coming in with us, and it's nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>